If you're looking for a quick and powerful way to convert one or multiple audio clips into different languages, then you've landed on the perfect video. In this video, we'll show how audio translation is made easy thanks to Billship, paired with the latest and greatest text and speech AI APIs from Google. But first, let's look at a quick demo. We have a Billship workflow that at its core uses the speech to text, translation, and text-to-speech APIs from Google. Let's try submitting an audio file to our workflow for translation. But before that, here's a short preview of the audio clip, which is currently in English. Hi, it's been a while. I'm just checking to see how you're doing. Let's catch up later. We'll be converting this audio clip to Spanish. Let's go to test. And here we're sending three query parameters. The first one is the URL of the audio clip we want to translate. The second one is the current language being used in the audio. In this case, it's English, so we're sending the language code EN. And then finally, we're sending the target language code, so the language we want to convert it to. The language code we're using is ES for Spanish. Let's test the workflow. And after a short moment, we get back the download URL for our newly created audio translation. And here's a preview of our new audio translation. Hola, ha pasado un tiempo. Solo estoy revisando para ver cómo te va. Nos pondremos al día más tarde. And if your Spanish is good, then you know the audio has been correctly translated. Perfect. In this video, we'll look at cloning the audio translator template in Billship enabling the different APIs we'll be using in the Google Cloud Console, creating an API key in the Google Cloud Console, and finally, setting up and testing the workflow. Let's begin. First, we want to clone the audio translator template. In Billship, on the templates page, we can search for audio, and here's the audio translator template. We'll select it, and this will spin up an almost fully completed workflow for us. There's some configuration that we need to do here, mainly related to the Google integration nodes that we're using. For instance, if we scroll down in our workflow, we'll see the speech to text node. And we can see here that the API key is required. As well, if we continue to scroll, we'll see we're also using the translation API from Google, which also requires an API key. So we'll need to do some setup in a Google console project. And if you don't already have a Google console project, that will show you a high level overview of how you can create one. And here I am in the Google Cloud Console. I already have a project created and selected. If you don't already have a project created, then that's the first step you'll need to do. To do that, it's pretty straightforward. Just go to the project selector at the top and then select new project. From here, just let the platform guide you through the process. And once you've created a project, then you can continue on with the rest of the steps in this video. There's two things that we'll need to do here. First, we'll need to enable the various Google APIs that our workflow is using. And then we'll need to create an API key so that we can authorize Billship to access said APIs. Let's go back to our workflow. And the first Google integration node that we're using here is the cloud speech to text node. If we bring up the info panel for this node, we can see that if we want to use this node, we must first enable the speech to text API in the Google console. So let's do that. We'll go back to the Google console. And then what we want to do is navigate to the API and services page. From here, we'll click enable APIs and services and we'll search for speech to text. Then we want to select cloud speech to text API. As you can see here, I already have this API enabled. If you don't, then you'll see a button that you can click to enable the API. So far, so good. But let's go back to our workflow to see what other API we need to enable. So if we scroll down here, we can see next we're using the translate text okay. node, which uses the Google Translator API. If we bring up that info panel again for this node, we can see that we must first enable the translation API to use this node. So let's do that. We'll go back to the console. We'll go back and we'll search for translate. From here, we'll select cloud translation API. And just as before, I already have this API enabled. If you don't, then click the enable button to proceed. Let's go back to our Billship workflow again and see what other API we're using. It looks like the last one that we're using here is the text-to-speech API. Again, we'll go to the info panel 
and we must first enable the speech to text API before we can start using this node. So go back to the Google console. This time we'll search for the text to speech API. Select Google Cloud text to speech API. It's already enabled in my project. If it's not for you, then just enable it. And that's the last of the APIs we need to enable for our workflow to work. The last thing we need to do in the Google console is create an API key so that our Billship workflow can be authorized to access these various APIs that we're using from Google. Let's create that API key. Let's bring up the menu and then under API and services, we'll go to the credentials page. From here, we'll create a brand new credential and select the API key. This will create an API key for us. At this point, you can copy this API key, but it's important that you keep in mind that your API keys are fragile and you should never expose them to anyone. With that said, this API key is being created for the purposes of this video only, and we'll be deleting it shortly. Let's save this API key securely in Billship. Let's start at the speech to text node and where it says API key, select secrets and we want to add a new secret. Click add secret key. And next we need to give a name for our secret. We'll just call it Google API key. And then we'll paste our API key. Click save. And that's it, our API key is now securely saved in Billship. So now we can select it. And our speech to text node is now properly configured. Now we can move on to finish setting up the other nodes. The translate text node also expects the API key that we just created. So let's select it, Google API key. And then finally text to speech, we'll just select the Google API key we just created. And that's all the setup we need to do for our workflow. But before we move on to shipping and deploying our workflow, let's take some time to walk through this workflow so that you understand exactly what's taking place. The entry point of our workflow is the REST API call trigger. Here we're specifying the API endpoint path to be audio translator, and we're setting the HTTP method to get. When we send a request to our workflow, we're required to pass three query parameters. The first one is for the audio URL. That is a publicly accessible URL for the audio you want to translate. Next, we need to specify the current language code. And then finally, we need to send the target language code we want to translate to. And before we run any of the main parts of our workflow, we first want to validate that the current language code being passed is a valid language code. To do that, we're using the language code validator node. Let's test this node out so you have a better idea of what it's doing. If we enter an invalid language code here and run this node, it will return false. But if we enter a valid language code like EN for English and run the node, this time it returns true. So after that, we have a branch node and the condition is the output of the language code validator node. And if the language code being passed is invalid, then we want to return an HTTP 400 bad request. The message we're sending back is invalid code for current language. And then we're actually providing a URL that will take us to a list of all the supported language codes that we can pass. But if the language code is valid, then we can continue on with the audio translation steps, where the next thing to do is convert the audio from speech to text and for this, we're using the Google Cloud speech to text API. But this note takes three input. The one is the audio URL. This is a publicly accessible URL for the audio you want to translate. And then secondly is the language code for the current language being used in the audio. And finally, we need to pass the API key, which we already set a while ago. Before moving on from the speech to text node, it's a good idea for us to test that all our setup in the Google Cloud Console is working properly. Let's test this node. For the audio URL, we'll use the same audio URL from the beginning of the video, and the current language code is English, and we can run this node. And with that, we can see that the API is working, and we're getting back the text from that audio. Perfect. The next step is to translate this text to the target language. 
But of course, before we do that, we want to validate that the target language code being passed is also a valid language code. We're doing the same steps as before where we're using the language code valid later node to validate this time the target language code. If it's an invalid code, then we'll just return as before. But if it is, then we'll move on to the next step, which is using the translate text node to translate that text to the target language. This node takes three input. The first one is the text we want to translate. We're getting this from the output of the speech to text node. Then we need to specify the target language code and of course our API key, which we're already specifying here. But let's test this node out. Let's enter the text, hello world. And let's say we want to translate this to French. We'll enter FR for the language code and run the node. And as you can see, our translation is working fine. At this point, the audio text has now been translated to the target language. The next thing that we want to do is convert that text back to speech. And to do this, we're using the text to speech node. This node takes in four input. The first one is for the text we want to convert to speech. We're using the output of the translate to text node for this value. Next, we need to specify the language we want the speech to be in. For this, we're using the target language code, and then we can select what type of tone we want the voice to be. Here, we're just setting it to neutral, and then we're passing our API key. The output of this node will be a base64 file of the text-to-speech we generate. At this point, we're now ready to upload the translated audio to Billship storage so that we can return a publicly accessible download URL back. To do this, we're using the upload base64 file node. The first input here is for the base64 file we want to upload. This is, of course, the return value from the text-to-speech node. Then for the file name, we're saying that we want to save this under a audio translation folder, and then we're giving a unique file name here. And then the last thing we're doing is returning the output of the upload base64 file, which is a public URL of the uploaded file. And that's all the steps in our audio translator workflow. Let's put our workflow to the test, but before we do that, we need to ship it. And our workflow has now been deployed. Now let's go to test. And our first square param that we'll enter here is for the audio URL. And we'll paste this time a different audio URL. In case you're curious, here's a preview of the current audio URL we're sending. Hello, YouTube. My name is Luis. I'm a software engineer here at Billship. Next, we need to enter the current language code. This is English. The English code is EN. And then finally, the target language code. For this demo, we're going to be converting it to Japanese. The language code to use is JA. And we can now test our workflow. And finally, we get back a download URL for our newly translated audio. We can then choose to download this audio file. Here's a preview of our translation. Konnichiwa, YouTube-san. That's pretty cool. And just like that, we've reached the end of this video. If you found what we just covered interesting, or if you have any feedback, then please let us know in the comments of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We have a lot more interesting content coming soon, and you're not going to want to miss out on any of them. But until the next one, happy bill shipping.